Okay, so we're back here now um, with a little bit of a, an update and, and, and view of the Triton. Um, I have posted a couple of short videos showing the uh, when I got the board running and also when I was uh, using the Raspberry Pi adaption of Sirius's hardware to program use a PS2 keyboard. Uh, those who've been following the Triton environment will already know that um, uh, Ian and I worked on a reproduction of the model 756 which is the uh, uh, keyboard that was supply or suggested to be used with the Triton uh, back in 1978 when it was launched so um, uh, we've also got a, a couple of uh, magazines to have a little look through um, the uh, we're going to hook up the Triton to a signal and uh, we'll uh, take a little look through the, uh, the magazines and the books and talk a little bit about it and give you a link to some of the websites which are relevant if you're interested in it yourself. Um, so, onwards and let's power the Triton up, shall we? We're going to uh, power the Triton up, which uh, is uh, quite a noisy uh, noisy moment. Well, we'll get the Sony on first, which gives us uh, let the tube warm up a little bit. Turn the volume down, we need, we need that buzz in. The sound comes out of the speaker here. And then we should have a display now when we power up. So if we get to the switch. There we go. Oh, there we go. And hopefully we've seen the Triton boot. There we go. Now, because um, you can't really read the screen on the, the, the camera, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a video out uh to capture it so there's nothing uh, nothing spectacular just this uh um sort of hdmi av to hdmi capture card uh which, um and I, I sort of plugged in um in order to do the triton what i've got is uh if we take a little bit of a close look at the triton's uh connector i've got the um a clip on the and a little a little composite adapter lead um, and we're just going to take the white lead which is the con which goes to the center of it I'm just going to clip it on the composite lead to the Triton it will stop the Sony working so actually uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, probably turn the Sony off because it loses its mind a little bit so clip that on and obviously the Sony's going to struggle a bit but now we should be able to uh, give you and or a video feed from the Triton whenever we need to see what we're doing. Um, you should probably lose my ugly mug as well for that one. So uh, hopefully it's here and um, we've got a Triton. I'll turn the brightness up a little bit, I think. Um, make a contrast maybe. And that should allow you to see exactly what the Triton's doing. Um, when we press uh, return, we should get a beep. Yeah, we do. Beep's coming out of the speaker. So we're, we're ready to go to, to actually do some code and work on the Triton. Um, the photograph is actually Ian's uh, keyboard. Um, this is my build of it. Um, still got a few bits that are there. Um, I did, uh, obviously the Triton's been quite a long project for me. Um, you know, I started, I found my bag of capacitors. Um, which are the original ones you'll see on the board uh, here. So the, the Triton was quite a long build for me really um, and we'll probably do a video after this one that covers uh, some of the things like uh, learning how to read the, uh, the um, character ROM. Um, it's it, it's an interesting one for those ones who do so we'll do a separate video covering some of those things because luckily enough you can you can see the uh, the content of the uh, the ROM just to probably make the A out on it, um, but there's there's quite a lot to cover, so we'll keep that for the next video, perhaps. Shall we? The purpose of the day really is just to get the um, some of the tricks of the keyboard adds to it. Um, obviously, the the Pi is a good way of doing it with the PS2 and allows to inject code, but I really wants to be able to do that with a proper keyboard on the the uh, Triton as well. Uh, before we go into that though, maybe we'll take a little bit of a look at some of the, uh, the websites that are out there. If those are interested in, in taking a look at the 
uh, their environment and, and perhaps having to play with the, the, the ones themselves. Okay, so what have we got then? If we bring up a web browser, oops, there we go. Okay, um, probably your best introduction is Happy Little Diodes' um, uh, restoration of his. Uh, he's lucky enough to own an original Triton. Um, the first of the videos is quite a good background on history, including the, uh, the sort of size of it. So I won't repeat that here. Uh, thoroughly recommend it. Link will obviously be down here below the video. Um, again, I'll give a link to all of these. Um, Patrick Warren's another owner who's got a website up. This is him with his uh, original Triton. Um, so there again, it's a way well, he's quite a lot of um, information about how the Triton works. Um, it's fascinating, well worth a look through. Um, if you don't want to build a Triton um, on GitHub, there is a um, Trans Am Triton emulator, which is actually quite good and allows you to run some of the software and it'll play with the level 7.2 basic and make the LEDs flash. So again, thoroughly recommend that. Um, there is a, a group of us on the uh, VintageRadio.net forum, um, not that many with a Triton, just uh, a couple, but yeah, it's a good forum, I'd recommend you in other areas. Um, one of the guys who did join though um, was very uh, uh, a very useful contributor and has um, set up his own website to restore his Triton. Uh, there's been um, um, a missing uh, item of the original firmware which we'll go into later and luckily enough Gerald had a copy of that and has made it available uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video perhaps um, he's got a quite an extensive site with uh, plenty of photos and he's also started scanning some of the Triton magazines that he has and it's an interesting follow of how he's restoring his machine. Uh, it doesn't use the George Risk keyboard, by the way. Um, and this, uh, he's put the first of the Triton magazine uh, from November 1982, which you can have a good read through. So that's well worth a look at. And obviously there's the Facebook page, which has uh, 23 of us now, which is, uh, which is good, um, with a mix of uh, reproduction and new ones. So uh, all in all, well worth checking out those links which will be in the, the video below and if you want a little bit more about the Triton and uh, perhaps even get around to building your own um, uh, which is perfectly possible still today you can source most of the components some are harder than others and, and actually um, I would say that the uh, majority of the uh, fun really is in actually finding those components and enjoying it um, the hunt for the, the parts um, and getting it all working is, is, is you know it's really quite fascinating but the sun's really come out hasn't it so uh, <laughs> wow let's, uh, let's turn the game down a little bit on the camera shall we here we go that's better so for this uh, session we're going to take a little look at the use of some features on the keyboard um, if uh, I put the Triton into W mode which is uh, the writer so type right in uh, I've got caps lock on probably yes the alpha lock goes on and off <laughs> so um, we're going to W mode and hopefully I can if I clear the screen which is the second button in um, the third one generates the uh, return to the monitor and the first one resets the whole machine. So this allows me this, so this. So you can get a fair old typing speed up, it's got a two key rollover. Um, it feels very authentic from from uh, back then, I would have said. So uh, some of the features are, are optional. Obviously, the uh, these displays are handy for diagnosis and debugging. There was quite a bit of work to uh, 
to develop the keyboard. So let's look at um, some of the other features of the keyboard um, which has built. Um, standard it, it's that it has the parallel output the Triton can use onto its parallel connector. Um, the only thing you really need is the uh, custom controller chip, um, resistor pack, uh, the, uh, 18 meg crystal, a couple of capacitors, LED for the alpha lock. Um, obviously you just can't get the depress keys anymore so which is why we've done the, using a particularly clicky key and the LED. Um, you need the stabiliser bar for underneath the uh, space bar because it's a centre key. You can actually do up to a 7 U bar as well uh, with two keys either end. Um, but uh, this one is uh, just a 6 and a bit one. Um, and as I said the next one there for the repeat key. These are all um, cherry blue apart from the uh, shift keys which are black and I believe there's a cherry green for the alpha lock because it's very clicky. Um, so it's a bit of a mix but the, the feel then is very good as a good quality mechanical keyboard. Um, I haven't built on the, there's room on the, the card for uh, the RS232 chip which I haven't built in yet but what you'll notice is I've patched into the socket which I have set up um, three wires onto it. Now the RS232 output from the keyboard is quite handy as, as you're typing away anything you type will appear on the screen so if I go into uh, Minicom and configure it um, the actual device is I've just made a little adapter up to a 3.5 mil uh, socket and that has a connector on it for um, uh, one of these USB to TTL uh, 5 volt leads which are easy to get um, and that is obviously created TTY USB so if I go change the serial device to TT to dev USB or TTY sorry TTY USB B0, sorry I'm typing, I've got a baddie finger, so, um, and then I change it to 9.6 board, um, I will make it mark because it ignores the, palace, um, the parity anyway, uh, but that's effectively what, if we set it to 4.800, if you remember, is the output from the serial wire that comes off of the, the Triton, uh, we can actually use that at a 4800 board as an output from the serial, output from the Triton which can echo everything. But in this case what we can do is see the serial out from the keyboard um, which if you had an RS-232 um, level shifter chip on there which there is space for then you'd obviously be able to send serial data to a device that uses a serial output. Um, we see that working if we turn off flow control because it doesn't use any and we go into Minicom. Oop. Uh, why did I not see TTY? Uh, I got that wrong. Okay, serial support setup. I might edit that out. I might not. People seem to seem like like me making mistakes. TTY USB zero. E is going to be nine six hundred, which is letter C. And like I said, I'll set the parity as mark just in case we set it to four eight hundred to try and serial out. And it goes. Um, we can then exit. And you know, hopefully now um, everything I type on this keyboard, yes indeed, is echoed to the terminal because it's coming out over the serial port. So that's a handy extra feature of the keyboard. Of course there's three wires here because there's, um, uh, your serial is usually send and receive but not all really used to send characters to the keyboard. Except of course when you're using the Pi because um, that allows you to inject characters into the uh, um, Triton to type in programs remotely. Now of course that seems really handy so um, there's a feature on the Test 2 firmware it isn't built into the standard firmware, the standard firmware has a serial out uh, but this one now which uh, we've been working on developing if you hold down the repeat, uh, the shift and the alpha lock then it doesn't actually go into alpha lock it goes into a mode where as I type on the PC keyboard see that the characters, and if I do a control L to clear the screen, 
so we are able to use the just like with the Pi we're able to use this keyboard to type on the the Triton um, through the serial port on the keyboard less useful now but very useful if you want to send a, um, uh, some information through so for example if I um, go back to the monitor um, the keyboard has now dropped out of serial mode um, if you don't use it for a while it will drop out um, the idea being you don't think the keyboard is frozen so all we've got to do now we're in there is I've got a um, if we take a look at the this little file this contains just um, the letter P a new line 1600 and then a row of um, hexadecimal notice the lowercase characters um, then in theory if I make some changes to our um, uh, mini com terminal um, you'll have similar uh, facilities in other uh, devices um, and I think that uh, there is the same facility in uh, Teleterm on the, uh, the PC Hyperterm as it's called I don't use Windows so uh, we only use these and I have got a bit of paper somewhere with some information written on it which I'm desperately looking for help to entertain yourselves or look for it I've written it down somewhere but I can't find it um, is there we go some written upside down on it okay so if we do control um, a for the uh, menu on minicom and we do o to go back into the program if we go into file transfer protocols you may not have ascii i've added it but the that is there's a couple of parameters you can set for the ascii transfer command um, in this case, I'm going to add on the end, I'm going to add a minus character delay of 90 and a minus line delay of um, 500. Okay, now if I exit back to there again and we do a control A and S for send, and I'm going to send via ASCII. Um, unfortunately, I'm not in the directory, so if I go to my documents, uh, retro and triton, then hopefully in here we have a copy of that soft spot file. Mm, Don't we? Lowercase, yeah, there we go, soft spot. So, now what are we going to do? We're going to put our keyboard into the receive mode and we are going to press return for OK. And what you'll see is that the characters get typed in a little bit slowly. Um, you can tune the, the interline and inter-character spaces. You need the inter-character spaces. Uh, you could probably get a lot shorter when you're typing in just hexadecimal like this. But the line uh, delay could probably be shorter as well. I haven't played with it. These values I know will work with basic program, which obviously takes quite some time to process each line as you put it in. So as long as you have that line delay and the inter-character space to allow it to cope with the typed characters. And the line delay doesn't need to be that long at the start of the basic program, but if you type in a big program like 3D Maze, uh, then you do need it. Um, the file's got some blanks in it because the, the piece of software this is from Computing Today, May 1979. Um, I think it's uh, is it this one. Got the magazine, yeah. Uh, yeah, May 1979. So this uh, what's being typed into the uh, um, thing is in in here. You've got a got a lot of software, um, and what's being typed in, I think, is this one. So it's uh, Etch a Sketch, um, which is uh, it looked initially. I didn't get it right, but what they do is they've. Uh, the actually jump addresses he's obviously hand assembled this so you've got to put some like extra characters in to jump the address uh, right up um, there's a couple of there's a couple of programs for the titan in here uh, there's a cross hatch generator if you want to test your television um, so that's quite some uh, useful little magazine oh it's finished typing in there we are we can go back to it i'm going to look at the magazine later shall we so there we are that's typed in it's ready to go and the Triton has done it. So if I now uh, control C, the, the keyboard is still in remote mode, but it's gone out of it fairly quickly. 
and uh, you can see the light was lit. So if I do control C back to the monitor now, and we do a go to uh, uh, 1600, I believe it was, that it was uh, at. Um, in theory, the first character I press, if I press a dot, yeah, it should start appearing on the screen. And then if I go down and I go left and I can go right again, I can actually draw over the Triton screen. Go down again and left and right and then up again. Okay, and then left and right. We can draw a little picture like an extra sketch on it. I'm sure we can improve on that program, but shows you how you can get an assembly language or a machine code program into the uh, into it. Should work fine with the uh, the trap assembler as well to type in code. Uh, memory expansion board uh, from Ian. Um, it's got a space on here for the previously uh, missing uh, trap uh, assembler. So. Um, I also, uh, you know, the uh, luckily enough on one of the uh, forums, the Vintage Radio Forum, Gerald came along and had um, a uh, trap uh, EEPROM and he saved it out. It's an excellent little connection. So I've just burned one into a 6.4 on the uh, old TL. Um, the, the legs are still a bit splayed. So I'd like to show you a, a really, a really nice gesture from uh, Paul Land. He sent me some of these which he 3D printed and they are um, leg conditioners for ICs, aren't they great? So for a 40 pin and for a 16 or 14 pin, or in this case a 28 pin. I mean, just how they uh, refuse the 40 pin in here, you just slide it down along. So uh, it goes in like that and then you've got, the, uh, you've got the chip there and then you just give it a good press. And it bends all the leads straight so that you can put them into a socket. Isn't that clever? So thanks very much, Paul. You just saw it on the video. I was using the old classic pressing on the desk and thought we'd be a, a suitable uh, candidate for one of those. So we're going to put that into our board here. And uh, hopefully the Triton will then start up in uh, with BASIC and give me an assembler and monitor uh, built into the, the machine. So, uh, so that's the Triton running and uh, we've got the uh, machine ready to go so if we press reset it will reset. Okie dokie. Hopefully uh, the beep is working as well, the beep circuit and I should just be able to press T to go into trap. And there we go, trap 2.1, editor assembler and disassembler available on the Triton. Isn't that excellent? And as I say, it will work with BASIC, and uh, we can we can prove that if we do a full reset on the machine. And we, um, I've got a, uh, I've got it available, but there's a copy of uh, 3D Maze as well. So if we go into BASIC, um, and we give it a full memory, and we find, um, do another, uh, Transmission from here, so we do a control A S and we look to send by ASCII. Um, we should have a copy of 3D Maze, hopefully, 3D Maze lowercase, and we start going. And hopefully, it will start typing it in. Uh, no, it won't because I forgot to put the keyboard in transmission mode. <laughs> uh, okay, let's abandon that. Then. Do a control A S and ASCII send, go back down and 3D Maze ready to do and I just, again I set it too soon instead of selecting it I will edit that second one out draw an AS ASCII now of course a lot of people this is actually how you would have saved programs if you have watched my uh, Karen Orton video will know that basically the tape just on a lot of machines paper tape or cassette tape just replayed the keyboard uh, for it to cope with so ready to go on that now I'll put it back into so it's repeat shift and alpha lock which are very difficult to accidentally hit together the lights lit we're ready to go I say okay and since accidentally it starts clearing there we go so it's typing in the characters quite slowly for the 3d maze game but it'll get on with that now and you can just leave it to type it in so uh, it's certainly a useful way of getting data into the uh, the machine if you uh, initially 
rather than having to type it all in because you can type it in using an editor on a PC but you could type it in and save it as well directly if it's not already available it's a good way of exchanging information with others without having to exchange the tape so quite a useful little extra feature I think and probably worth an upgrade to the controller chip to get that feature um, some of the things I'd like to add to it is um, toying with the idea of adding a um, a UUCP encoded uh, transfer mode where the Triton just sits waiting for input high speed in which case you could shorten those into transmission delays and just bang the file fairly quickly you might need a bit of a Python script on the other end though handling direct to the serial port a bit like we do on the Raspberry Pi um, to optimize the speed at which you can type in but it's certainly a, a good option to get a serial in on the the Triton which doesn't have that facility built in although um, in one of the websites I've given you the links to um, there is a, a routine which uh, it basically injects onto the, the UART and replaces the cassette system for loading and saving a very clever bit of code on the PC end uh, that basically allows you to program the system remotely some right here to this so uh, hopefully you found that interesting we'll uh, let it carry on I won't make you watch all the way through uh, but it is going to carry on typing in the 3D Maze game for me, uh, which doesn't actually work yet. I must have some typos in it. So uh, it's going to be quite a bit of debugging to go before we all get it working. Uh, not long before this point, they actually had a couple of syntax errors typing the basic in. Um, so luckily enough, I did keep a recording of the typing in, and we find out why it went wrong at that point because that obviously throws it completely. So, uh... so I think we'll leave it there and save it for another episode um, where we will perhaps have a look at the magazines, um, maybe get that and typed in program working. So there's quite a lot to do with the this beautiful machine. Um, I think what we'll uh, we pick up in the next episode is some of the great work that uh, Ian is doing to create a reproduction case in the sort of style of the, the Triton one from back then. Um, he's also managed to secure a manufacturer to remake the Specialist Transformer, which has uh, an 8.5 volt and a couple of... Uh, 12 volt outputs he's as an extra one for expansion capabilities as well so i've got one of those on order and all in all that will allow us to put together quite a nice final machine so we'll uh, we'll see um, perhaps uh, how it was constructed some of the detail of actually building one from scratch uh, go through some of the magazines and hopefully see it go into its final rest in case um, and uh, be used as a, an actual machine to do some development work with moving forward because it really is the uh, sort of British equivalent of the um, Altair or the MSI 8080 machines. So see you next time. Thanks. <laughs>